Greetings. You know it's a great day for pre-calc. Well, today we're going to take a look at binomial expansion. Right on, here we are. Binomial expansion, exclamation point. That might be important. Let's start with that. Are you familiar with it in the terms uh, of math? Okay. If you see something like five with an exclamation point, what is that, real loud five? No, no, no. It simply means this. And again, simplified times 1 is 120. Okay. Now, certainly, we don't want to be doing this by hand if uh, we get some mighty big ones. So let's take a look at the calculator. And where can we find the exclamation point? All right, it's going to be under math, probability probably and there it is come back if you hit that in there five exclamation point should be 120 okay so a lot of this you can use calculator for but let's spice it up okay so what are we gonna do we see something like this all right well think 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 that's 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1 up top. What do we have on the bottom? 2 factorial, it's called. It's 2 times 1. 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. And if you write it all out, you should see that you have 3 times 2 times 1 on top and bottom. Okay? And then the 4 divided by 2 is just 2, so what's left? So you can do some uh, problems that require a little thinking, more thinking than calculating. So that's our kind of intro to binomial expansion. All right, and uh, the big thing we got to talk about is Pascal's triangle. Ever heard of it? Well, it's quite genius show you the whole thing and oh it keeps going well beyond this but I wanted you to see the pattern okay it's got cascading ones down both sides of the triangle and then what do you see next okay you got one and one here and then you always begin and end with a one but what about in the middle it comes from the two that it's connected with so one and one make two. Take a look at this one. Begins and ends with ones. But in here, one plus two is three and three. And you can kind of follow the pattern. Well, it never ends, all right? Um, <coughs> but we got to talk about uh, terminology here. All right, we begin not with row one and term one, but with row zero, term zero. Works for me, okay? You'll see it written like this as well, okay? So in reality, what we think of maybe as the second row is really what? Row one, okay? And this guy in particular, row one term zero and row one term one all right, so you're gonna have to get used to the fact that they don't start with ones all right start with zeros okay. so what is this going to be used for good question good question well binomial expansion 
All right, this is going to be used to give us our coefficients when we expand a binomial. All right, so let me show you the binomial theorem by way of an example. So here is our example. All right, now you've already seen it, but let's say they asked you to do x plus y to the third power. All right without going about it this way, that just means this. Now, could you foil these and then super foil these? Sure, you could. All right, but what if that three had been a 31, okay? We'd like to finish sometime uh, in this millennium Luckily, we've got a little trick called binomial expansion to help us. So, here's what you're going to do. All right, first of all, this is the magic number three. Okay, and that tells you that you're going to take x and start it high, and then it's going to go low, and then you're going to take y and start it at the bottom. All right, and it's going to go up as it goes this way. So they will pass each other. And what do these exponents always add up to? In this case, three. Alright, so your setup will look something like this. Alright, so here we have term zero. What did we say? We were going to take x and start it at the highest exponent, and y had started at the bottom. And then look what happens. Just as I told you, the x's go down, the y's go up, and what do the exponents always add up to? 3. Alright. Now, the last thing we got to do is fill in those blanks, all right? Well, we could use Pascal's triangle, all right? And where are we going to go? We're going to go to row three, okay? And take a look how many numbers do we need, one, two, three, four. So when we go back to row three, let's find it. Row zero, one, two, three. And what do you notice? How many numbers are in row three? Four of them, okay? Now, what if we forget, bless our hearts, that we started with row zero? What if we thought that was one, this was two, this was three? We'd figure it out because we'd be one number short. But right now we're going to take one, three, three, one, and those are going to be <coughs> your elements to put into these four blanks. Okay, and except for maybe crossing out the zero powers, this is your answer. Okay. And, like we said, could do this the long way <coughs> if you're show off. Remember how to do super foil. If we added those two together, how many x cubes do we get? One. How many x squared y's do we have? Three. 
How many xy squareds do we have? Three. And how many y cubes do we have? One. Okay. But again, binomial expansion is the name of the game today. Alright. Now, how else could we have found the one? Three, three, and one. Alright, you'll recall this from your algebra days as well. You can use this combination to find those coefficients. So we know it was one three three one. Okay. Let's say we wanted to use NCR to find that guy. Okay. First of all, what was the magic number? N was three. So that's going to be a 3. And then, what do we have here? Term 0, term 1, term 2, and term 3. So right now we're looking for this. To the calculator we go. Alright, when we were looking at the factorial, maybe you saw something else. Right here is NCR. So we're going to hit that one. Okay. And we're going to plug in the 3 in front, 2 in back, and it better say 3. Okay. So yes, you can use the calculator to find those numbers that fit into the blanks. Alright, well, I figured we'd do one of these full on. And that'll do it. So let's say I give you a monster like this 2x plus y to the fifth. Okay? First of all, that's the magic number. Okay? So we're going to go to row 5 of Pascal's triangle, or type in what? 5C0, 5C1, 2, 3, etc. Alright? And remember this, there's always one more term than the magic number. Notice there are six boxes here, and that's a five. Alright? So, could go all the way back to here. All right. And again, we need row 5. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 gets this bottom one. So 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. Now, what did we say we were going to do with the first guy? We said we were going to start that one at the high number, and it was going to work its way down. Okay. 2x to the 0 power, poof, that's the good news there. So, 2x started at the high, y is going to start low and work its way up. And away we go. Okay. Now, we would like to find the coefficient that's going to go in front of each of these. Okay. So what are the numbers here? We have 1, and we have 2 to what power? The fifth. Okay. With or without your calculator, that is 32. Okay. You know what? I think I'm going to write it right here. 32x to the 
to the fifth and y to the zero. Okay. I'm going to write it just so you can see the pattern. However, anything to zero power you do not need. All right. How about here? What are the numbers? We have five times two to the fourth. Into the calculator that goes and you get 80. And remember the X's are going down, the Y's are going up. So it's X to the fourth, Y to the first. And follow this pattern until we get the problem done. 10 times 2 cubed is also 80. 10 times 8. And we're halfway done. But again, look at what do all the exponents add up to. 5 and 0, 4 and 1, 3 and 2. They will always add up to that magic number. Over here, we have 10 times 2 squared, which is 40. Here we have 5 times 2 to the first, 10. And finally, we said we crossed out the 2x to the 0, so we just have 1y to the 5th. And this Whew. is your answer. Okay. And before we leave it, all right, somewhere in your future, if not in our homework, then in your next class. All right, they may just ask you for this guy. All right. They want to know what is the coefficient for the third term. Alright. Well, let's see. First of all, we got to remember that this is term what? Zero. So this is term one, two, three. Okay? So know which term you're trying to find. Common error alert. People are going to forget that. Okay? So I would suggest writing it out like I did. All right. So you know that it's going to be x squared y cubed. But how do we find that? Okay. If you don't write this, you might forget that that's 2 squared, not just, you know, this number 10 that you got off the uh, Pascal's triangle. Okay. So remember that. This Pascal's triangle or That's how you can find that number, but it's times 4 also. Okay. So, that is that. Okay. Hope you learned something today, and let's make it a great one.